Yo, what is going on? Thank you so much for joining in. So, Death Stranding is a game that came out by Hideo Kojima back in 2019. And this is a game that is known to be polarizing in terms of people loving it or people who just don't understand it at all. The biggest criticism that you'll most likely see is that the game is described as a walking simulator or just boring. Two days later. However, you might not need convincing, but I am here to tell you it is so much more than a walking simulator. This game has so much going for it, and after 60 plus hours of playing it, I can definitely say it's one of my favorite games of all time now. And since you clicked on this video, you probably have interest into the franchise. So getting to the point of the video, there's a Death Stranding book? Is this even a story that takes place within the Death Stranding universe? Is it a prequel to the game? Or is the book just simply a retelling of what's in the game? So you know what I did. I bought the books, I read the books, and now I have thoughts on if the Death Stranding books are as visceral and morbidly intriguing as the game. So if you're ready, let's dive into it. <laughs> And before I talk about the books, I wanted to quickly talk about what the game is all about. Just to give some context, but if you already have the general gist of the Death Stranding game, I'll put a timestamp down below so you can go ahead and skip to the book portion of this video. So prior to the game's release, the marketing and promotional material for this game drove a tremendous amount of hype. Ever since it was first revealed at the E3 2016 conference. The first trailer and all the material afterwards was cryptic, bizarre, cinematic, unusual, and just different. And at the end of the day, this is a game being produced by a juggernaut within the gaming industry, Hideo Kojima, whose name alone emboldens trust with whatever he pushes out. Kojima even referred to this game being the very first strand game that is entirely a new genre. And I'll be honest here, at first I had no idea what a strand game implied. Maybe it's being stranded on an island. Wilson! So after doing a quick Google search on what a strand game is, it's where your main objective or at least a major component of the game is to form social interactions to either connect or build things. Strands being the connections you make to other players and also the other characters within the game. So what the heck is the game and the story all about? Super high level, the premise of the game is that we get a load of crap. We deliver that load of crap over and over and over again. And that's it. Huh? Okay, but for real, Earth suffered from a cataclysmic event known as a Death Stranding that caused multiple simultaneous void outs or explosions across the world, causing mass destruction and casualties. This event also disconnected and isolated populations of people by completely removing any means of communication, infrastructure, and basically leaving huge craters in the ground wherever these void outs occurred. Also, we now have these invisible ghostly entities that roam the world, known as BTs or beached things, where if one of these BTs touches another person, another void out occurs. And now rain is called time fall because when it pours down, anything it touches, it rapidly ages. Oh, one more thing, when someone dies, the body can necrotize, leading to another void out if the body isn't burned. So yeah, the world is basically effed, people are isolated, ghostly entities roam the land, rain is now a time vortex, and dead bodies can make a combust. So that is the current situation in the world, is with our boy Norman Reedus. Hi, I'm Norman Reedus. Who is actually named Sam Porter in the game. Sam is basically voluntold to travel the wasteland of the US, connecting the remaining cities to something called the Chiral Network and deliver needed cargo to the cities and the outposts surrounding them. So at a high level, this is really what the game is all about, where you as Sam Porter start out with basically no gear, walking and delivering small amounts of cargo with a variety of tools and vehicles at your disposal. And going back to the marketing of this game being you know, bizarre and strange, that definitely still carries into the game. The visuals are wild, the gameplay is different and not your typical shooter. And most of all, the narrative, it goes all over the place where you can easily become confused and lost. And with that being said, I still love playing the game. The soundtrack, the atmosphere, the slow progression, the tactical route and cargo planning just worked for me. Running down a mountain, trekking through the snow, sprinting through fields alongside an awesome soundtrack was all just relaxing and plain addicting. Then. Terrorist, BTs, Timefall, giant boss battles, explosions, 
provided those action-packed moments that kept your interest into the game where you're not gonna get bored at any moment. And with that being said, when I found out that there was a Death Stranding book, I was intrigued to say the least. And looking further into these two books, I found out that this was actually a novelization of the Death Stranding story, meaning that it's not a spin-off, it's not a prequel, it's not a sequel, it's actually a retelling of what we've played in the game. And again, for some reason, the book is split into two different parts, even though the game is a, a single game, and each book is around the 300 page mark. So not really sure the logic there, but maybe more money. And going to how the book is structured, the chapters within the book are exactly what the chapters are in the game as well. I dove into the books, not really sure what to expect as a huge portion of the appeal to the Death Stranding game is, in my opinion, the gameplay. When reading the book, we're not holding a controller, moving Sam Bridges with our thumbsticks, overburdening him, and making him stumble with hundreds of pounds of crap loaded on his back. We're also not gonna be planning out our routes, and also not being extremely selective on what tools and weapons we're gonna fabricate for our journey. So what can we expect to find when reading this book? And is it worth a read even after completing the game? Can you read this book without playing the game and experience Kojima's vision in the bizarre world of Death Stranding? Death Stranding. This child's special. Countless faces were staring at him. They edged closer until they filled his entire view before disappearing. Faces he had seen before. Faces he might see in the future. Faces he would never encounter. And faces that died long ago. They all appeared before him and vanished, pinned down like an insect under a microscope. He was unable to move. All he could do was let them examine him. Which are you? A face he didn't know, swam into view. Am I connecting to you, or are you connecting to me? Where are you? Are you in the past? Are you still alive? Are you in the land of the living? Or are you in the land of the dead? And again, this book is split into two different parts with each book covering about half of the game. And the overarching narrative is exactly the same as what we experience when playing the game. So in the book, we start off with Sam Porter waking up in a cave, while in the game, we start off with Sam Porter in a cave. From there on, almost every cutscene that you have within the game is also covered within the book. And almost word for word, a ton of the dialogue found within these cutscenes are pulled directly into the book. <laughs> want it? A crypto buy it a day keeps the time fall away. So now that we know that the story is essentially the same, dialogue almost matches up 100%. So what else is the same? What is missing? And what is added, if anything? Starting off with what is the same, number one might come at no surprise, but we have the same characters with the same names. We have Deadman, Die Hardman, Hartman, Spider-Man, and more. Number two is that the antagonists of this game are the same and also provide the same obstacles to us throughout the story. And just like in the game, we have those spectral entities trying to pull us down into the tar world. And we got the mule bandits trying to steal our crap. And number three is the atmosphere. The author, Hitori Nojima, and the translator, Carly Radford, do a fantastic job giving you that same ominous, unsettling, but yet captivating feeling that you have when playing the game. The wind caressed Sam's face. He closed his eyes at how pleasant it felt. Thought he heard the BB laugh as well. The outlines of the mountain's ridges, towering in the distance, were unusually clear. The mountains themselves blocked Sam's path up ahead, but in that moment, all he could think about was how majestic and beautiful they looked. They exuded a majesty that human hands would never be able to capture. His heart was pounding as he let the grenade fill with his blood. It sucked out so much, it was almost like he was holding another heart in the palm of his hand. Sam's vision narrowed as the dizziness from the loss of blood began to set in. Having filled it to the bursting point, Sam prayed as the grenade left his grip. Goodbye and rest in peace. The dead belong to the land of the dead. There are so many scenes just like this within the book that gave me the same type of feeling I had when I was playing the game. So there are a few things missing from the book that are present within the game. Number one is probably gonna be the most obvious and uh, that is the gameplay. Well, duh. Arguably, the gameplay is one of the most appealing elements to why Death Stranding is so popular. You get to traverse and explore an open world, plan and strategize your route, fabricate the tools and weapons that you need, then actually make the trek to the next destination to deliver that cargo, whether that's through walking, 
riding a motorcycle, or taking a big truck. You as the player get to decide how you want to do all of this and what deliveries you want to embark on outside the storyline. You get to experience all the different tools and weapons by actually using them within the world either to help you on your journey or to fight against the bandits, mules, BTs, and other bosses. In the book, uh, not so much. Don't get me wrong, Sam does use weapons and tools throughout the book. It's just very limited compared to the amount of options that you have within the game. Number two is the connections or other strands that you make with other players. There is just something compelling about seeing other structures created by other players for you to use on your journey, with some actually really helping you out. Seeing all the signposts and all the different structures put up by other players really made you feel like you're connecting with a bunch of other people and working together on getting your cargo delivered. And with this being a, you know, book, we're not gonna get any sort of multiplayer elements out of it. Come on, man. And number three is the amazing soundtrack found within this game that plays at just the right time when you're stumbling through fields of grass or trekking up a huge mountain. Not saying you can just play the soundtrack on Spotify while reading the game, it's just, you know, not the same. So the book actually has some elements that are not found within the game that actually adds to your overall Death Stranding experience. One of the elements that I enjoyed the most out of this book was the inner monologue by our boy Sam Porter Bridges, or you know, Norman Reedus. You shut up, I'm doing a thing! I'm doing a thing ish. We get to get into the mind of Sam Bridges and really get his reaction and his current feelings on the situation at hand. To me, it helped me better understand and connect a little bit deeper with Sam Porter Bridges as a character. We get to to connect with Sam with all the different struggles he was facing and the overbearing responsibilities placed on his shoulders. And that was not the only thing put on his shoulders. <laughs> Got he. The next one is somewhat on the same lines as the first one, but we actually get to get behind the eyes of a lot of different characters within the story that we definitely did not get within the game. And in the game, we make a ton of deliveries to cities across the world and outposts where when we talk to the people there, it's usually through a holographic projection and that's it. We're saying we're just standing there brooding. What took you so long? In the book, we get to explore more of the characters that we're making these deliveries to and get their background on how they got to the city in the first place, their current stance on the world, and get their reaction to coming online again, connecting to the broader UCA or the United Cities of America. I think it was great to get behind the lens of a different character other than Sam Bridges, overall increasing the world building found within the book. Also, I felt like in the game, one of the main antagonists, his name is Higgs, we didn't get a lot of backstory. Well, in the book, we actually get a whole background on this character all the way from his childhood so we have a really good deep connection as to why he became Higgs. So really overall I really enjoyed my read through both of these books. Being a fan of these games the books only help me better understand the world and the story of Death Stranding. I'm not gonna lie to you when I first played the game I definitely did not understand all the cutscenes or all the dialogue right away so even I get lost too. This book is supplemental material that I do not feel is redundant and actually adds value to the Death Stranding franchise. I feel like you can either read the book or play the game and still have a nice Death Stranding experience. But if you do both read the book and play the game, you'll have that full complete picture of what I believe is Kojima's vision of the Death Stranding story. I'm very excited for the sequel to this game to come out and it would be 100% open to reading another novelization of that sequel, especially if it was written by the same author. One of the main takeaways from the book and the game is the power of human connection. And I gotta say, Thank you so much for connecting with me and watching this video. If you want to connect further, go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know down below if you've read this book or if you plan to. Also, what's your thoughts on the Death Stranding sequel? Are you excited for it? Also, for sticking around this long, you've earned one XP token. And if you're already a subscriber, you get an extra XP token. So here you go. Have a good one. Peace.